right, so we made it to Lake Bled in Slovenia. It was about a four and a half hour drive from Balzano and the Italian Dolomites. It was not too bad as far as traffic was concerned. Something to keep in mind if you're making that same drive that we did is that there is a 15 euro vignette that you can buy at the gas stations. You have to buy it prior to entering the country of Slovenia. And then if you go through the tunnel, seven euros and 60 cents as of February of 2022. So it is a little bit expensive just to get into Slovenia. But yeah, now yeah. we are, we just left the apartment and we're gonna go walk around and explore the town. Hopefully see the lake before the sunlight disappears on us. <laughs> yeah. The town of Bled was super sleepy on this random Monday night in February, but the sunset totally blew us away. After this amazing show from Mother Nature, we went to dinner at the old cellar Bled, and it was amazing. The staff were super friendly and the pate was highly recommended and delicious. We went back to the hotel after dinner because we had some snowboarding to do the next day. Well, Will did anyways. I'll leave a link to that specific video below. After snowboarding at Vogel, we made a pit stop at the other end of the lake, near the Golden Horn statue to be exact. In the summertime, this is a great spot for water activities and hiking, but it was a little too cold for that when we were there. We took some cool photos and made the hour drive back to Bled, this time to see it in the daylight. We parked in this lot specifically, which took a card and cost two euros per hour. Google Maps told us it would be a 15 minute walk to the castle. <laughs> yeah, if you were really booking it. There's also parking closer to the castle that's three euros an hour, and I'll leave a link to more information about that below. We didn't know about that, so we walked up a million stairs to get to the Blood Castle. When you arrive to the castle, you will approach a ticket counter. It costs 15 euros for an adult ticket to enter the castle grounds, but with the reservations to the cafe inside, entry is free. We made a reservation ahead of time, and from what I remember, we told that to the ticket people at the gate, and then I think that they called the restaurant to confirm our name and reservation time, or the restaurant called them and told them to let us in at our reservation time. Either way, you'll get in. The Bled Castle restaurant has a perfect view and we enjoyed a few appetizers, local beer, and an authentic Bled cream cake. They offer a seasonal menu and a tasting menu that ranges from 60 to 75 euros and looks amazing. Afterwards, we had some time to wander around the castle grounds before they closed. There's a free audio guide on their website as well as a free app you can download on Apple or Android. Afterwards, we went into town and got some drinks on this random Tuesday night and then went back to our hotel to make dinner. The next morning, we drove the 40 minutes to Ljubljana. There's also a train which takes one and a half hours and can cost up to 20 euros. We stayed here at the Urban Hotel in the city center. Unfortunately, they don't have parking, but they advised us to park at this lot a short walk away. It's open 24 seven and it seems like a good place to park if you need to leave your car for a couple of days. We spent a few hours in the morning wandering around the city center. We walked through the local food market filled mostly with fresh produce. I wanted to check out a few vintage clothing, antique, and bookstores that I will share with you now. Diva's vintage store I had marked as having designer pieces. Also bonus that it was so close to our hotel. Pults for vintage clothes and vinyl records. 
Textile House secondhand reminded me of a more traditional Goodwill. I thought this store had some really interesting art. A lot of large portfolios, maybe from an old art school or something, they were filled with sketches and original paintings and studies. I wrote in my notes that this place had Yugoslavian artifacts. I'm pretty sure I went there and it was mostly books. Maybe a lot of these books for Yugoslavian, but it was hard for me to tell. I have this place marked as a kilo shop for clothing. This one marked as a gift shop and bakery with good little sweets. Lastly, there's Humana Vintage. After visiting a few of these stores, we went to go see some street art. Hello, today is our first day in Ljubljana. We woke up a little bit late, had breakfast at the hotel, it was amazing. And then we got kind of a late start, just kind of a lazy day. We're starting to walk around this morning. Mm -hmm. Alex went thrift shopping. <laughs> yes, guys, I got went to the store called Humana and I got a $15 pure silk blouse. Very nice. Good thrift stores here. So we have a food tour scheduled for four o'clock, but before that, we're just gonna walk around. We're currently at Metalkova. It is an art district that's full of street art, mm -hmm. um, as you can kind of see behind us here, and then a lot of other installations, statues, etc. So it's a kind of a unique piece of the town. Kind of reminds me of Berlin a little bit mm -hmm. with all their street art. So we're gonna continue to walk around. We'll show some footage, and then uh, we're gonna hit the food tour in about an hour and a half. Awesome. Metalkova is compromised of seven old military barracks and has been a place for peaceful and creative purposes since the dissolution of Yugoslavia in 1991. Google describes it as a hip urban culture center featuring underground music, theater and arts events, plus bars and nightlife. It gives major Freetown Christiania vibes, per our Copenhagen video. If you're planning a visit, just always be mindful of the people who live there. As Will mentioned, we went on a food tour for the rest of the afternoon. Being a Wednesday in February, we were the only ones on it. I can leave a link to a few good food tours below. We thought ours was good and well worth the money because it was more of a geography and history tour while eating lots of yummy food and trying lots of different wine. Speaking of that, we learned that Slovenia is also up and coming in the wine industry and we got some recommendations from our tour guide I can show you now. We were particularly interested in picking up some <laughs> orange wine. The next day, we drove to the nearest grocery store to get some of the bottles that they recommended. From there, we took a little 60 minute drive to the famous Pradyama Castle. I believe there is a bus from Ljubljana that can take you there as well. Sites like Get Your Guide and Viator also have a lot of half day trips from the city center for around 70 to 100 US dollars a person. Hello everyone, we are at Pradyama Castle about an hour outside of Ljubljana. This morning we woke up, got breakfast, did some wine shopping and bought about eight bottles of Slovenian wine and then we drove down here a little bit southwest of Ljubljana. It was a good drive. Parking we think is free right now but sometimes it might be five euro, we're not really sure about that. It's February so it looks like there's usually restaurants that are open but they're closed right now. But there's one. There's one, one open, open right over okay. there. Yeah. There's one restaurant open here and Sometimes bathrooms are open, but they weren't right now. Fortunately, <laughs> the restaurant had a bathroom and I just yeah. snuck in there real quick. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're going to buy tickets to go tour the castle and there's an audio guide. I think it's about 15 euro a person. There's also uh, an option you can do the cave. We'll put the name below. <laughs> However, if you do the cave, it's 25 euro a person. You can get a combination ticket for 37 euro a person, but We've done so many caves before that we're kind of just like, eh, eh that's okay. We'll come back at you with some more facts once we do this audio tour. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Let's do it. We bought our tickets inside the castle, but their website recommends you buy online ahead of time. It looks like their prices have been raised a little bit to 17 euros and 50 cents. They also have many packages on their website and I'll leave a link to those below. 
The info panels in the castle and the audio guide are both really good at giving the full picture of the castle and of its previous residents. We thought the castle was definitely worth it. It's honestly so cool and we've never seen anything like it. The castle is over 800 years old, sitting on this 123 meter high cliff. The tour takes you inside and outside with a view of the valley below. There are some artifacts and furniture and a wishing bell that we had to ding, of course. <laughs> this bell used to be this bell used to be a warning bell, but now it is a wishing bell. So now my wish is gonna come true. A common theme in Slovenia. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> Two wishes. The coolest part for me was seeing the parts of the castle that shared a wall with the stone of the cliff. <laughs> and then an even cooler part was when you get to see the massive cave connected to the castle. This castle was able to survive under siege for over a year because of this tunnel system that connected them to the outside world. One part of the story I remember most is of the prince having feasts with cows and sheep, totally flaunting to the army outside that the siege wasn't impacting them at all. You can go inside a part of the caves, but you can't go very far. They do offer more complete cave tour experiences, and you can find tickets for those on their website. We spent a few hours here and then enjoyed a late lunch at that restaurant we mentioned earlier. How could we resist a table with a view like that? All right, after driving back to Ljubljana, parking the car and all that, we did something very stereotypical. Where are we going, Will? We're going up to the castle. <laughs> it's right there. Sunset incoming. <laughs> we chose to walk up to the castle, but there is a funicular that costs six euros for a round trip ticket. They also have some packages that include audio guides, museum, and castle tickets, but most of that was closing by the time we got up there. The castle website is actually very good about providing info on events and their restaurant, so I'll leave that link below. We just enjoyed sitting outside the walls and watching the sunset on our last night in Ljubljana. Hmm. The next morning, we woke up to begin our drive north to Chesky Krumlov, a fairy tale town in the Czech Republic. If you're interested in visiting there, I will link our itinerary video for that in the description. If you have some more time to spend in Slovenia, I'd love to share some places that are still on my list. The first is Patui. We were really close to canceling Chesky Krumlov and coming here instead. It's the oldest recorded city in Slovenia and has the oldest winery in Slovenia as well. Most importantly, it holds an event that is top five on my bucket list, maybe top three. It's the Slovenian Carnival Festival where furry monsters called currents run around scaring away winter and welcoming in springtime. It's obviously much more than that and Rick Steves has a good little video about it that I'll link below. Next up, I've also got this awesome hotel on my list because all I ever want to do is stay in castles. We also debated making the drive to the coast to Piran or Koper, Copper, sorry guys, which both look totally beautiful. When I'm not trying to stay in a castle, I'm usually trying to stay at a vineyard. So of course, this place is also on my list. A short drive from Ljubljana, I also saw this place online and it looks very quaint as well. I also considered spending the night in Kamnik. We would have stayed in this hostel 
and we would have eaten at this restaurant. From there, I was interested in seeing the Velika Planina, which is a cluster of herders dwellings and looks like a nice place to hike around. I know there are a ton of things to do in Slovenia and the country's official website actually has some very good recommendations. I'll leave some of my favorite get your guide experiences below as well. We really enjoyed our few days in Slovenia and know that we need a lot more time to experience the country fully. We look forward to going back there one day, especially for carnival. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any recommendations, please leave them below in the comments. Till next time. Bye.